The New York Islanders beat the Philadelphia Flyers 4-3 to in overtime, but when is a win not really a win? We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We have got a lot to discuss after this eventful game against the Philadelphia Flyers. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You could follow the show on X at Locked On Isles, and you could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR vs. NYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis, and it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. The good news, the final score, Islanders 4, Flyers 3. The bad news, that game-winning goal by Brock Nelson came in overtime. And the Islanders, well, they held a lead by the score of 3-2 to and gave up that lead with exactly... 9.6 9.6 seconds left in regulation time. That sent the game to overtime. And the result, well, the New York Islanders got a badly needed two points in this game. But the Philadelphia Flyers, a team that they are chasing in the playoff race, they got one badly needed point in this game. And uh, I'll tell you, it hurt because. The last three and a half minutes of this game, the Islanders were just in full hanging on by the skin of their teeth mode. They could not clear the puck out of their own zone. And every day, we have seen this so many times from this team where, you know, they're on the verge of doing something great and they just can't quite finish the job and here you are playing the flyers uh you've got the lead you need the two points and you just can't finish because the team couldn't clear the zone and they had chances they had chances i mean look john tortorella pulled the patrick wah pulled his goalie with three and a half minutes left in the game and Unlike when the Islanders do it, it worked for the Flyers. And they just, the Islanders just had chance after chance after chance to pull, you know, to pull off the win. Uh, Kyle Palmieri had a golden opportunity at an empty net. But look, we already know what it's like when the New York Islanders have an empty net. The odds are they are not going to get that empty net goal. And it comes back and really, really bites them in the rear end because this is a game you needed to win in regulation and you just end up falling short. And just to give you an idea of sort of the, you know, importance of this, the Flyers with the loser point have now 83 points. They are still four points 
ahead of the New York Islanders, although the Islanders have two games in hand. But Pittsburgh won, keeping their rather slim playoff hopes alive. Detroit won, putting them three points ahead of the Islanders. Islanders still have a game in hand. And so you're not getting help under these circumstances. And you didn't help, more importantly, you didn't help yourselves to come that close and to not get the win in regulation just stings. And look, there were bright spots in this game. Let's start with the what may be the most, you know, the brightest spot of them all, two goals in 18 seconds. Matt Martin and Bo Horvat scoring. And, you know, Horvat reached 30 goals in this game. Congratulations to him. Brock Nelson reached 30 goals in this game. You had a great goal on a redirect late in the second period to give the Islanders back the lead after they blew it in the first minute of the first period, uh, second period, rather. And again, you know, this team. In the first period, they were really dominated. And, you know, they had six shots on goal in the first period. I think, you know, halfway through the period, they had two. And they just weren't producing much. But starting goalie for Philadelphia, Sam Erson, just didn't have what it, you know, a a good game. Let's in the two goals uh, by Martin and Horvat. And, you know, just... Islanders are up two to one when they didn't deserve to be ahead after one period. Second period, which is usually the Islanders' weakest period, they outplayed the Flyers, but the Flyers scored in that first minute. Islanders get it back late. And then in the third, again, just too conservative, too much in a shell. And do I blame Semyon Varlamov for giving up that last goal? No. Uh, quite honestly, I don't. Barley made 30 saves, played well enough for this team to win. But when you can't clear the puck with the game and possibly the season on the line, that is just not a good sign. Look, same lineup, more or less. You had Holmstrom and Wallstrom, Aho and Bolduc as your scratches. But the line combinations were different. And again, they got shuffled. The game opened with Pajot, Lee, and Horvat. Nelson, Engvall, and Palmieri reunited. Barzal, Sezikis, and Fashing as your third line. And then McLean, Martin, and Clutterbuck. Uh, eventually, Barzi and Bo Horvat were reunited as, again, Patrick Waugh juggling those lines to try to get this team sparked. But uh, again, you know, this game in many ways was like the season in microcosm where they were good at times. They were frustrating at times. And even though they were good enough in some ways, you know, to win the game and they did win the game, They blew a golden opportunity to get two big points and hold the Flyers to none. And, you know, they're they're good enough to, to keep themselves alive, but not good enough to really do what needs to be done to get that regulation win. And yeah, it was, it was just one of those games where it hurt. It absolutely hurt to watch this team give up the tying goal with less than 10 seconds on the clock. And boy, it would have been huge. Now, uh, credit to uh, Ivan Fedotov, who made his NHL debut against the Islanders, came out in the second period after Urson struggled in the first. And in that second period, when the Islanders were dominating, Fedotov really kept Philly in the game. You tip your hat to the six foot eight inch goalie making his NHL debut and made 19 saves in 21 shots. Uh, can't blame him for the for the game winner, but I, again, just just so frustrating because this team is just not good enough to do what it needs to do, and you watch the big regulation win just slip 
through your fingers. We've got a lot more to discuss on today's show. We'll have our hero and goat of the game. We'll also preview tonight's big game at home against the Chicago Blackhawks. That's a 7.30 Eastern time start. And again, you can hear every minute of that game with the Islanders hometown broadcast on Sirius XM. Just go to the SXM app and do a search for Islanders. We'll also have our Islanders birthday of the day, a center who briefly played with the Islanders in the late 1980s. We'll see if you can guess. And a native New Yorker. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got all that and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded. April, one of my favorite months on the sports calendar. And FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 that you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, which is now underway, the NBA, the NHL, and so much more. Heck, you want to go for football futures? Check that out. And hey. Islanders, Blackhawks tonight, check out the prop bets and the uh, odds you can get. Use your knowledge of the Islanders on FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube and now it's also available on amazon fire tv and the free fire tv channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now available on the free uh, free fire tv channels app so You know, some tough moments in this game and some really good moments in this game. The tough moments, well, uh, Matthew Barzal, I, I mean, he hit two different teammates with shots in this game. Uh, Kyle Palmieri got hit later on in the game in the head. He was okay. Uh, Bo Horvat hit. He did not return for a while. And then in the third period, maybe a few minutes in, he took to the ice again, but missed most of the second period. So, you know, Horvat, uh, not out there for as long as normal. Uh, and yet still the Islanders managed to, uh, you know, kudos to Bo for getting back out there and, uh, you know, making making a statement in the way that he returned and toughed it out. So, uh, you know, good for Bo, but boy, uh, Barzy, got to be careful there as far as hitting your teammates with shots. Uh, you know, more balance in this game. As far as the lineup uh, forwards were concerned, no forward reached the 20-minute mark, although Matthew Barzal came close. And we saw a lot of Pierre Engvall, but again, not a lot from Pierre Engvall. He had one shot on goal, was a minus one, one takeaway, one giveaway officially, but he was out there for 17.35. That was the second most minutes among any Islander defenseman. We saw Pelic and Polak reunited so that was uh encouraging and noah dobson even though he didn't show up on the scoreboard he was a plus two in this game so good to see dauber back on the plus side of things uh in this contest as far as our hero and goat of the game i'm going to start with the goat And I could go a number of different directions. I can go with Matthew Barzal for hitting two teammates in the head, but, you know, that's not enough for the GOAT. 
I can go Kyle Palmieri, uh, who had that chance at an empty net goal that would have secured the two points in regulation and just did not get the shot off in time. It got blocked. It got deflected. It, you know, went wide. And, uh, you know, so that doesn't work. But to me, it, it's the, the team as a unit. I'm going to stick to the unit failing to get the puck out of the zone in the final three and a half minutes. And especially in the final 30 seconds where you're that close to clinching the much needed win and you just can't get it done. Hero of the game. I got to go with the game winning goal. And that's Brock Nelson. Nelly, uh, you know, scoring, reaching that, Finally getting that 30-goal mark. Can't say he was great throughout the game. Neither was Anders Lee, who had the go-ahead goal. Uh, On one of the goals by the Flyers, uh, you know, there was a coast-to-coast goal uh, where the, you know, Lee fell down. And, you know, it was just unbelievable watching uh, Travis Sanheim just go coast-to-coast and the Islanders looking really bad so you know tough to pick but i'm gonna go with the game winning goal and brock nelson and and look here's the deal You, you look at the standings right now and the islanders you know eight teams make the playoffs the islanders are 10th in the conference they are only three points behind the capitals for that wild card spot And, you know, the Capitals and the Red Wings, and they're four points behind the Flyers who are in third place in the Metropolitan Division. There's eight games left. Can you make up those points? Yeah, you can. But it is going to take something that this team has not done consistently all year, and that is to play consistently well. That is, you you need to start stringing together like another six-game winning streak with eight games to go. And even that may not guarantee it, but here's the good news. The next two games, tonight against Chicago, Thursday in Columbus, you're facing teams that are on the outside of the playoffs looking in. And you have got to win both of those games And, you know, because those two teams, Chicago's in the Western Conference, Columbus is, you know, so far behind you in the standings, it doesn't matter if you win those games in a shootout or in overtime, although you'd rather win in overtime for tie-breaking purposes, but, or in regulation, but just get those four points. Get four points in the next two games, and then the schedule gets a little tougher. But you've got to bank the next two games. You've got to bank two wins. I don't even want to win in an overtime loss. You need two wins because the schedule gets a little tougher after that, where three of your next four games are against teams who would make the playoffs if the season ended today. So, again, you know, this team is in the messy middle. They are good enough to tease us and make us think, you know, it's possible, but they're not good enough to do it consistently well, where you, you, you just, if they face, you know, they're not going to put together too many games where they find that magic and win and, and do things the right way. They're just not fast enough. They don't have enough score scoring. They just don't have enough skill. Every day, as you know, we've been talking about this most of the season. In fact, we were talking about it during the offseason. If this group really wants to stay together, if this team really wants to uh, validate Lou Lamorello's faith in the core, it's time to go on another winning streak. And they have got to win the next two for sure. Otherwise, we are wasting our time. 
We have got more to discuss on today's show. We'll have a full preview of tonight's home game against the Blackhawks. Plus, we have our Islanders' birthday of the day. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Regardless of where we are in the standings, Islander fans, I want to remind you, you can win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick weather studs like Horvat, McDavid, or McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Islander fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. And don't forget, if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day, do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Islanders back home tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks, 7.30 Eastern time start. And again, you can hear every minute of that game with the Islanders' hometown radio broadcast on Sirius XM, just go to the SXM app and do a search for Islanders. The Blackhawks have actually won lately. They've won three of their last four. Now, granted, they beat San Jose in one of those games, but they just beat Philly 5-1 to one in their last game, uh, a team that the Islanders were barely able to beat. And look, The Blackhawks are not a great hockey team right now. I I don't think there's any illusions there. This team is in last place in the Central Division by 18 points. Uh, They're not going anywhere this year. They are next to last in the league in goals scored and 29th out of 32 teams in goals allowed. Their power play, 27th in the league. The penalty kill, 21st in the league. Not great numbers, but hey, this team is not lacking in talent, just doesn't have enough of it to be competitive. The big story all year for the Blackhawks is Connor Bedard, the number one pick in this past year's NHL draft. And even though Bedard has missed 14 games, he's already surpassed 20 goals, he's got 21. He leads the team in goals, he leads the team in assists, and absolutely leads the team in points. He has 16 of his 36 assists on the power play. Nick Foligno leading the team with eight power play goals. Uh, Also, you know, more names on this team. Seth Jones, still a solid offensive defenseman, and the goaltender, Peter Mrazek has really done a great job. And if you want to hear a little bit more about the Blackhawks, I I did interview the host of Locked On Blackhawks on Monday's Locked On NHL podcast, so you could check that out. Uh, Jack Bushman covers them, and you'll, you'll get a little more insight into the Hawks if you want to go down that road. But Mrazek really has played well, and Arvid Soderblom, Uh, He played in goal against the Flyers in their last game, so I fully expect Mrazek to be ready to go for the Blackhawks in this game. As we look at the line combinations for Chicago, Jason Dickinson centers Connor Bedard and Philip Kurashev on the top line. Tyler Johnson 
Nick Foligno and Taylor Radish are the second trio. And then Andreas Athanasio, he centers Lucas Reichel and Joey Anderson on the third line. Jason Dickinson, has he got double shifted. He teams up with Landon Slaggart and Ryan Donato on the fourth line. Defensively, Alex Vlasic and Seth Jones, the top pair. Kevin Korchinski and Jacob Megna are the second pair. And Wyatt Kaiser and Jared Tenorti, the third pair. I mentioned the goalies, Mrazek and Soderblom. Injuries, well, let's start with Taylor Hall on IR. He was supposed to help Connor Bedard, but he's not available. Connor Murphy on IR. Colin Blackwell day-to-day. Reese Johnson listed as out, as is Nikita Zaitsev. So... Injuries have hurt, but look, let, let's cut to the chase. If you want to have any hope of making the playoffs, you have got to beat a Chicago Blackhawks team that is more or less, I, I'm not going to say tanking, but they're tanking. They're trying to maximize their draft position. They don't want to win multiple games down the stretch and blow that. Uh, they had the first overall pick last year. That's what allowed them to add Bedard. So now we'll see uh, whether or not the Islanders can take advantage and uh, hopefully get two more points and stay alive and keep things interesting in these last eight games of the season. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And this is a hard one, but it is a native New Yorker, a player born in New York City who went to Colgate University, spent four years there played a grand total of 14 games for the Islanders, one in 87-88, 13 in 88-89. I am, of course, talking about Mike Walsh, 6'1", 195 pounds, was not drafted. Walsh made his NHL debut in 87-88 with the Islanders. In those 13 games in 88-89, he scored two goals, had four penalty minutes, Uh, And that was the extent of his NHL career, Uh, went on to play one year in Italy and then spent the rest of his career in the minors, hung up his skates after the 92-93 season. And, you know, I, I did mention that he scored two NHL goals. Well, it's really easy to pick his best game as an Islander because he scored both goals in one game, March 28th. 1989 at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Islanders hosting the Washington Capitals. Pete Peters, the goalie for Washington. Jeff Hackett in between the pipes for the Islanders. And with the Islanders down 1-0 in the first, Mike Walsh gets his first career NHL goal. Mick Vakoda and Gerald Diddick with the assist. That tied the game at 1. With the Islanders up 4-3, to three, Mike Walsh strikes again in the third period with four minutes and 52 seconds left in the game. His second of the game, first goal of his career and last goal of his career coming in the same game. Gary Nyland and Derek King with the assist. Islanders hang on for a 5-4 to four win over the Washington Capitals. For Mike Walsh, he scored on the only two shots he took. He did have the game-winning goal. And both goals came at even strength. So Mike Walsh, born in New York, New York, he is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We will have our key takeaways from the game tonight against the Chicago Blackhawks, plus our weekly farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, stay safe, everybody. Have a great day. And of course, let's go Islanders.